Is it the Russian government, organised crime, or none of the above? All we know is many people who cause problems for this place come to a sticky end. Here are just some of the deaths that have been attributed to the Kremlin. Anna Politkovskaya was a Russian reporter and an outspoken critic of the government. Her book, Putin's Russia, accused the president of turning the country into a police state. She was shot at point-blank range in an elevator in her apartment building. Five men were convicted, but the judge found the assassins had been paid a $150,000 contract fee by an unknown party. Alexander Litvinenko was a former KGB agent who died three weeks after drinking tea laced with deadly polonium-210. After fleeing Russia, Litvinenko had attacked the methods used by his former employers within Russian intelligence. A British inquiry found that Litvinenko was poisoned by Russian agents Andrei Lugovoy and Dmitry Kovtun, but Russia has always refused to extradite them. Boris Berezovsky, a Russian business oligarch and part of Boris Yeltsin's inner circle in the late 90s, was instrumental in Putin's rise to power. But his influence with the new regime declined, and Berezovsky went into self-imposed exile in the UK. He commissioned a stream of publications hostile to the Russian government and gave evidence at the Litvinenko inquiry. He was found dead in a locked bathroom at this Berkshire mansion, with a noose around his neck. The coroner recorded an open verdict. Boris Nemtsov was Deputy Prime Minister in the late 90s and viewed as a potential successor to Boris Yeltsin, but Vladimir Putin beat him to the top job. He soon began to protest the curtailing of civil liberties in Russia and was arrested many times as the Kremlin cracked down on opposition rallies. Hours after urging the public to join a march against Russia's involvement in Ukraine, Nemtsov was gunned down a stone throw from the Kremlin. Mikhail Lazin was nicknamed the bulldozer during his time as Putin's press minister, leading the Kremlin's efforts to censor Russia's independent television outlets. He also founded the state-funded Russia Today news channel. In 2015, he was found dead in a Washington hotel room, officially due to a series of drunken falls, just days before he was due to appear before the US Justice Department to answer questions about the inner workings of RT. Denis Voronenkov, a former FSB investigator and Russian MP, defected to Ukraine in 2016 and began giving evidence on Russia's activities in Crimea and eastern Ukraine. He was gunned down in broad daylight in front of a hotel in Kiev. The Ukrainians laid the blame squarely with a Russian crime lord linked to Putin's security services. The Russians blamed Ukrainian nationalists. Russian businessman Nikolai Glushkov was found dead at his home in southwest London earlier this year, strangled, according to police. He was a friend of the oligarch Boris Berezovsky and had clashed in court with Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich. At the time of his death, Glushkov was about to defend himself against a fraud claim brought by the Russian airline Aeroflot. But as we saw with the surprise resurrection of the anti-Putin journalist Arkady Babchenko, whose murder was faked by Ukrainian intelligence in order to catch his pursuers, things aren't always as they seem. The Kremlin has seized on the event as just another example of the West's willingness to smear Russia with the charge of murder at any cost. I'll get that little piece of dandruff off.